Hey, what's up guys? I go by the name Soji Gray and welcome to another episode of Quick View. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so that anytime a new video is released, you're going to be updated instantly. So on this episode, I want to talk about 10 of my best Mac apps. Previously, I've done my best iOS apps. I've done my best Android apps. And right now I want to do my best Mac apps because I own a MacBook, a 2017 MacBook Pro, and I'm running Mojave. So I'm going to be giving you 10 of my favorite apps so far. These apps are very interesting, guys. Like um, the apps I've been using for some time now, and I really trust these apps. So if you're on Mac OS or you know someone who's on Mac OS, uh, make sure to recommend this video to them so that they check this video out and they can be able to have access to these apps. Without wasting much time, let's jump into the video. So my first app is Spark. Spark is an email client actually. And if you're using the MacBook Pro or if you're using the Mac OS, you're probably familiar with the mail app that um, Apple gives to, I mean, its users to kind of interact with their email. It's a very nice app and all, but I don't really love the vibe it gives me. I feel it looks kind of outdated and I was managing this, the mail app, till I found Spark. Spark is a much more simplified email app and I really love the way the app looks. It's very intuitive. It has this smart control whereby it can be able to categorize all your emails for you. And it has a calendar app. How cool is that? How many email apps have calendar apps inbuilt? Overall, it looks very nice and you can actually sign in to different email clients. So Yahoo Mail, uh, Gmail, iCloud, Yandex Mail, and then so forth. So Spark is my first best Mac app. I hope you guys find this app very interesting. I mean, you should download it and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. So my second best Mac app is Google Keep. Google Keep is a note taking app. It's available on Android, on iPhone, for the Mac, and it's even available online. So no matter the browser, if you go online, you type in Google Keep, google.keep.com, you should have access to Google Keep. I really like that this app is cross-platform, so it's very easy to use. Once you download Google Chrome and download Google Keep as an extension on your Mac, it appears on your home screen, and if you click it, it loads Google Chrome, and then it pops up. One thing I do like about this app is that you can be able to add different color palettes to your text. And so as you can see here, I have my best free Mac apps, and I've been able to type in some, some names. I can change the color to say uh, this is deep yellow or something yeah so there you have it you have a save there if i take my iphone or i take my android phone all these you're seeing here is going to be reflected onto those devices and that for me is convenient and it saves time so google keep is my second best mac app i want you guys to download it and let me know what you think so my third best mac app is free download manager i really love how this app looks but it's also very functional so you can download torrents different files and I think it's almost like the equivalence of um, IDM. If you're on Windows, you should be familiar with IDM, Internet Download Manager. I mean, it's as fast as IDM and it has something that IDM doesn't have. It has torrents downloading. So if you do want to download the torrent, you can just drop the link into the app and it downloads it automatically. Unfortunately, I don't have internet connected right now. So I won't be able to demonstrate to you, but free download manager. I mean, it's made my life very easy. After I got to know this app, downloading is so easy for me and the good thing is that if you're using chrome it's able to automatically install an extension into chrome so if you want to download anything it redirects itself to this app and it downloads with ease so go check free download manager out today so my fourth best app is sync ios sync ios is kind of an alternative for itunes if you do want to transfer content say media files videos from your macbook to your iphone or from your iphone to your macbook i think sync ios is better i don't really like itunes because it has to sync and back up before you can kind of do whatever you want to do but with sync ios is pretty straightforward you connect your device you transfer the stuff without backup and you're good to go so it's, it's a very convenient app for me and it's a very great app i mean it's free to download it's pretty simple you should check sync ios out today my fifth best mac app is l media player i mean i found it like some weeks ago uh, usually I used to use VLC, but VLC had this issue that I didn't really like. You know, when you're using VLC on the MacBook, VLC has this thing whereby it can amplify your sound. So if you're watching content in the max, it can go in relation to volume as 100%. 
VLC makes it go to 200%. I think this can be dangerous for your laptop because the more you use this on your laptop, the more you cause damage to your speakers. I used to use a 2012 MacBook Pro and one day I was watching a movie. I think it was a series or something and then I had everything in VLC and then I slept off and it kept on playing the whole night. So when I woke up, my MacBook speaker was just damaged and it was because I was using VLC and I had racked up the volume to 200% and it destroyed my MacBook. So sad. But I really love this L Media player because the interface is very nice and it can't go above 100% like VLC. Also, it has support for a number of codecs. So if you want to watch, say, a movie in MKV or all those other files, you can watch those files easily with L Media Player as compared to the default QuickTime Player. QuickTime Player doesn't support a number of codecs. I do love how this app looks. It's very nice. As you can see, the volume buttons are very big and very cool. And it supports AirPlay and i mean it looks good one thing i look out for in an app is a good design and l media player has a very very good design i think you guys should try it out it's free they do have a paid version and i don't know what it does but the free version does basically everything i need it to do and i don't think i would ever need the paid version so you can go ahead and download l media player today it's it's a good app i think it's a good app so now let's move to my sixth best mac app and that is going to be spotify I mean, this is not a paid version, this is a free version. They do have a paid version, but I'm enjoying the free version currently. And let me tell you the reason why I love this app. For example, if you're using a MacBook Pro and you do have, say, MacBook with storage of 128 gigs, you probably have some apps, you have some media files. I mean, you can't afford to have music on there because the music is going to take up a lot of space. I feel that's where Spotify comes in. You can stream music from a number of uh, artists. If you're using the free version though, some ads are going to pop up and then you do have a limited number of times you can skip a song, but I don't think it's that bad. I usually play the ads and then I listen to Spotify for free. But if you do want to upgrade, I feel this app is worth it. The fact that I don't have to lose memory whilst enjoying music and having to stream them is something that I really really love about Spotify. So you can just go ahead and download it. I'm going to drop links in the comment section down below. Let's move to my seventh app. My seventh best app is Battery Monitor. So once you open Battery Monitor, it gives you statistics on your battery, the battery life of your MacBook actually. So if you open the Battery Monitor app from your status bar, it actually lives in your status bar. So once you open it, you go to design capacity. So my design capacity for this MacBook is 4,790 milliamp hour, but the full capacity right now is 4,487 milliamp hour so it has lost some potency can i say it, it has lost some potency and i of the 100 percent design capacity i do retain 94 percent so as the charge cycles increases it can indicate it's over there and then it shows you your remaining capacity it tells you your battery health and it tells you the cycles you've used on your macbook i feel it's a very nice app having to know all these statistics is very important especially if you're buying a slightly used macbook from someone you can download this app to check how long the battery has been used or has been charged and the design capacity as compared to the current capacity so battery monitor is a very nice app and i mean it looks very nice too i really love apps that have very nice interfaces and this one is one of them now let me move to my is it my eighth app now let me move to my eighth app my eighth app is shazam you're probably familiar with shazam it's available on iOS devices is available on Android devices. If you do want to identify music, what this app does is that it's able to listen in on the music and let you know who sang it, the title of the song, and sometimes where you can get the song to stream or download. It's a very nice app. So probably you're in the restaurant, you're somewhere using your MacBook, you are connected to a Wi-Fi hotspot, and you start hearing this really nice song you don't know the title of, but you'd want to stream sometime later what you can do is you have the shazam app living in your status bar so once you select it you can double click to auto shazam and that's very nice because you can be anywhere and what shazam does is that once he hears a song and you have internet connectivity it's able to identify it so shazam is my eighth app let's move to my ninth app my ninth app is flume so flume is an instagram client for the macbook and so the thing is that if you're you're on your MacBook, you don't have to go to Instagram.com to access your Instagram photos or look at photos of other people. You can download Flume 
you can download Flume and then what this app does is that it gives you a very nice representation of all your posts you can come down and go to your profile you can go to your DMs you can go and check your notifications you have search as favorites it has the home so it's, it's a very nice app it does have a pro version with the pro version you can upload using the app but if you opt for the free version you can just look at photos you can double click to like and and the rest but you can't upload so that's with flume i really love this app i recommend you guys to go download it and if you think the the paid version is worth it you can upgrade my last app is android file transfer i, I think i saved the best for last because uh, there are a lot of people out there who probably have an android phone and have a macbook so if you're someone like that this app is going to be good for you android file transfer is a very very nice app actually when you download the app and then you connect your android device to your macbook it automatically pops up and then you can have access to all the files on your android device straight on your macbook it's very simple it's a google app though but i think google did a very very good work with this app i think the only thing i don't like about the app is the logo i don't really like the logo i'm a fan of the logo but it's a very nice app so if you do have a macbook and own an android device you really need this app so thanks for watching this episode of quick view guys if you're new to the channel make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so that anytime a new video is released you're going to be updated instantly um i'll catch you in the next one stay blessed